Trailmaker essentially is a user-friendly tool that is deliberately designed to make single cell RNA-seq data analysis accessible. We offer a complete single cell RNA sequencing solution and we really support you throughout all stages of your single cell journey. Trailmaker is available for free to all Pars customers and also for free to all academic users. It is fast, it is flexible in terms of data import and export, and also it enables efficient collaboration, particularly between wet lab scientists and bioinformaticians who might typically work together on single cell RNA-seq data analysis. It's very simple to process your fast queues within Trailmaker. So the first thing you do is that you would create a new pipeline run within the platform. And then we have this wizard that basically walks you through each step where you would then input the experimental details that are required. So for example, here you would select which kit you used in your experiment which version of chemistry you used, and how many sub-libraries you would like to process within this particular pipeline run. In the next step, you then upload your sample loading table. If you're already a Pars customer, you will know what this is and you will have used this in the wet lab part of the experimental protocol. Essentially, this is an Excel file that you can literally drag and drop into the platform to upload it. And this is the part where it's basically used in the wet lab preparation part where you have your sample names, your cell numbers, etc. within that file. In the next step of the wizard, you then select the reference genome that you would like to align your data to. And in the final step of the wizard, this is then where you would upload your FASTQ files. And we have two different options for uploading your FASTQs. You can either do that through the web browser. Alternatively, we have the console upload, which is essentially via the command line. We have various instructions and support articles available on the website and through the user guide in order to support you with this. It's really very easy and simple. And as I say, we're happy to support you through that. So when you've then uploaded your FASTQ files, um, essentially here, you will see your list of FASTQ files within the, the pipeline run with a Trailmaker, and you would then be able to run your pipeline. Obviously, the run the pipeline button up here on the top right is blocked for me right now because I have not uploaded any FASTQ files. But let's take a look at a previous pipeline run, um, which we've already run within the platform. The pipeline outputs reports look like this. We show the all sample analysis report uh, as a summary uh, by default, but you can select to choose the individual reports from your individual samples if you'd like to. On the top right here, we have the classic barcode rank plot where you're looking for a well-defined knee in your data set. And on the top left, we have various different statistics from your pipeline run. Underneath, we then have the plate um, heat maps, which can help to identify pipetting errors and plate loading errors within your experiment. In the pipeline outputs, you can download various options using this download button here. And from there also, the data are automatically sent to the downstream insights module for all of that downstream analysis. Within Trailmaker, we have a seven step data processing pipeline for this insights module, which essentially cleans and integrates the data. So the first five filters are where data are cleaned up. So various things are filtered out from the data set, and then we integrate the data and then configure the UMAP Rotisney embedding plot and the clusters for visualization. For example, here, this is the cell size distribution filter. Samples are listed vertically and underneath each sample plot, we have a statistics table that explains what is being filtered out. And finally, in terms of filtering, we have a doublet filter that filters out the doublets and multiplets based on the SCDBL finder method. For all of these filters, there is an automatic setting that has already been applied to the data set. And then in step six, this is the data integration step. We use the harmony method by default, but you can select to choose a different method if you like. You can then check the integration, for example, using the embedding plot. And in the final step of the data processing part, this is where you can configure your UMAP or TISNI embedding plot. You can select your clustering settings using LIDAR or LUVIN clustering and set your clustering resolution to something that makes biological sense for your particular data set. So here we have the UMAP embedding with our clusters that we just computed at the end of data processing. And we have our full list of genes within the data set and a marker heat map underneath. The first thing that you would typically want to do in this particular module is likely to annotate your clusters so that you can understand what cell types are represented in your clusters. And for this, we have an automatic annotation tool where we use SC type and you literally just select the, um, the tissue and the species that your data set uses and then you can compute that annotation. And that would give you a list of annotated clusters such as the one that we see here. You might then want to sanity check that that annotation is correct. So for example, you can zoom in here on the um, on the marker heat map in order to view the marker genes for this particular cluster, cluster one, which has been annotated as those monocytes. 
you can search for that gene in the gene list here and you can then visualize that gene over here on the embedding plot. And obviously you can immediately see that that is indeed lighting up that particular population. Obviously you would typically then want to find out interesting biological insight into your data set. So we can uh, then perform differential expression in order to do so. So let's grab that monocyte cluster and we can then compare that cluster. Obviously this is comparing males and females. So as you would expect, we have a bunch of Y-linked genes that are coming up in the differential expressed list, which would make sense. You can filter those genes using this advanced filtering method to you know, take only the most significant, for example, and you can then send those genes for pathway analysis. You can also grab some of those genes and put them into the heat map, for example, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some genes into the next module, which is the plots and tables module. So as this module name suggests, this is where you can plot your results in various different ways using range of different plots. And each of these plots is fully customizable to so that you can design them to your preferences and export them as an image for publication.